Today the RBA's too slow moves is extending and embedding inflation. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the Reserve Bank has released its November statement on monetary policy and it's upgraded its underlying inflation forecast almost all the way through to December 2024 as businesses pass through high energy prices and flooding on the east coast of Australia puts upward pressure on grocery prices. The bank's preferred underlying measure of inflation, the trimmed mean, is now forecast to peak at 6.5% in December 2022. That's up from 6% just three months ago, before falling to 3.75% in December 2023. Remember that the trimmed mean is a statistical adjustment that minimises extreme price movements at both ends of the inflation distribution spectrum. When inflation, though, is so broad-based, I'm not sure it's that useful. Anyway, trimmed mean inflation is forecasted to climb towards the top of the inflation target range of 2-3% by the end of 2024, hitting 3.25% in December 2024, compared with an August-issued projection of 3%. So they're just trying to squeeze it in under the band right out at the end of their forecast. The overview section of the statement that does not provide really any further insights into the decision processes at the November board meeting. But it does reiterate the points that interest rates have already been increased significantly in a short period of time, that the effect is yet to be seen, that slowing the pace of tightening would allow more time to assess that, that drawing out policy adjustments also helps to keep public attention focused for a longer period on the board's resolve and that the more frequent meeting schedule allows for smaller incremental changes. But I have to say it also means that they can perhaps muddle through a bit longer. It doesn't necessarily address the root cause issues. Going forward, of course, they say all options are on the table, including moving to larger steps if necessary, or even pausing for a period. The emphasise clearly being that policy is not on a preset path. But... The revised forecasts for growth, unemployment and inflation are frankly worrying as it seems to suggest the RBA is actually being too timid compared with its peers, leading to higher inflation for longer and no path back to low interest rates in the forecast period. Forecasts are actually provided out to December 2024. Due to the surprise lift in inflation in the September quarter inflation report, the bank has raised its forecast for headline inflation in 2022 from 7.8% in the August statement of monetary policy to 8%. The forecast for inflation in 2023 has been lifted from 4.3% to 4.7%, while 2024 has been lifted from 3% to 3.2%. This means that the bank is now forecasting inflation in 2023 to be much nearer 5% than the 4% that we saw back in August, while it is clearly making the statement that it expects inflation will remain outside the 2 to 3% target range for the three years. Now, it's very rare for the RBA's out-year inflation forecast to be so far above its target range. In fact, the only other instance being when the major tax changes were set to boost the CPI, the carbon tax of 2011, and the GST in 2000. It's also worth comparing the RBA's forecast with those of its central bank peers. The 4.7% for 2023 is well above the RBA's 2-3% target. And while central banks and other developed economies are also expecting to miss their targets in 2023, they're actually plotting a clearer return to target in 2024. In fact, if you look at the recent inflation forecast from other central banks in developed economies, noting that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is likely to lift its forecast, for 2022 and 2023 by around 0.2 percentage points when it updates its forecast later this month due to a sharp and expected increase in September quarter inflation. In fact, if you make the comparison between Australia and some other economies, Australia's inflation picture is not more benign. And while inflation forecasts are troubling other developed economies, 
Inflation is still rising in Australia, up from 7.3% in the September quarter, whereas most other developed economies are forecasting lower inflation by the end of 2022. Other central banks are taking a much more aggressive approach to rate rises. Markets and central bank guidance indicates that even for economies like Canada, New Zealand and the UK, which have higher household debt exposures to short-term interest rates, the terminal policy rate is likely to set at, at least one percentage point above the RBA's likely terminal rate. The inflation forecasts for 2024 are particularly interesting. Canada is at 2%, New Zealand is at 2.2%, the UK at 1.4% and the US at 2.3%. The central banks are forecasting a much more emphatic return to target in 2024 than the RBA's forecast. So the more cautious approach from the RBA does raise the prospect of a further entrenching of high inflation as businesses and households may doubt the RBA's commitment to returning inflation to the target zone. The governor's statement that the bank is aiming to return inflation to the target band, quote, while keeping the economy on an even keel, contrasts with other central banks who accept the economic slowdown as the cost of containing inflation. In fact, the RBA, well, it could be a bit of a pipe dream, frankly. These forecasts are based on a path for the cash rate broadly in line with expectations derived from surveys of professional economists and financial market pricing, most likely actually a straight arithmetic average. Exchange rates and oil prices are also assumed to be unchanged through the forecast period. Now, this approach to cash rate assumptions can lead to some tensions. The forecasts are based on what the market and analysts expect for the policy instrument rather than what the bank expects it needs to do. The risk with such an approach is that the bank's forecasts are consistent with market pricing but may not be consistent with the bank's own objectives. There is some evidence of this conundrum in the revised inflation outlook. Psychologically, a near 5% forecast rise for 2023 may lift expectations for both businesses and households, particularly with wage negotiations that are currently taking place. And negotiations may also be influenced by further progress in the proposed changes, which the government is now close to legislating that would allow for industry-wide bargaining. The bank's growth forecasts are more in line with the likely economic cost of containing inflation, and the forecast growth rates have been lowered from the August numbers, particularly for 2023. Growth is now forecast at 2.9% in 2022. That's down from 3.2% in August. It's 1.4% in 2023, down from 1.8%. And 1.6% in 2024, down from 1.7%. The major source of the downward revision is household spending, which was revised down from 2.4% in 2023 to 1.3%. And in fact, I think those could still be rather too aggressive. Despite lower growth, the forecasts maintain that the unemployment rate will only rise from 3.5%, that was revised up from 3.4%, to 4.3% by the end of 2024. And that's a lift from the August forecast of 4%. With slower growth in 2023, though, it's likely that the unemployment rate will go higher, maybe above 5% by the end of 2024. And forecast wages growth in 2023 has been lifted from 3.6% to 3.9%, reflecting the tight labour markets, which are likely to persist through 2023. In fact, the share of jobs that received a wage increase over the past year has increased, they said, to around 80%, and that's the highest level since 2012. And about 15% of workers recorded a pay rise of more than 4%. That's the highest share since 2014. Wage increases have been particularly strong at the bottom end of the skill distribution, they said. But those are still well below inflation. So in real terms, people are still going backwards and will continue so in the next couple of years. So given the bank's inflation forecast, it's frankly hard to see how interest rates could be cut any time over the next two to three years, as inflation will still be way above target, at least the next couple of years. If the RBA's inflation forecast does prove to be correct, it really is going to be impossible to justify rate cuts unless the economy tanks completely, because inflation will still be outside the target zone and the unemployment rate won't actually be necessarily through the roof. So 
I think we're going to have to see the RBA lifting the cash rate probably more aggressively than they want to in the face of strong inflation. And it could indeed well go above 4% or more before we're finished. But because they're doing it slowly, they're extending the problem. Oh, and as a postscript, it's worth noting that Australian retail sales volumes rose just 0.2% in real terms in the September quarter. That's according to figures released today by the ABS. Now that was the fourth consecutive rise in quarterly retail volumes, but the smallest since COVID-19 lockdowns ended in October 2021. The ABS said sales volumes reached a new record level in the September quarter, but growth slowed to just 0.2% following a 1% quarterly rise in the June and March quarters. While volumes growth eased, retail prices climbed a further 2% in the September quarter, reflecting the strong rise seen in the consumer price index that they earlier reported. So in other words, you can thank inflation for higher values for sales, but we're not buying much more stuff. And the state breakdown showed a broad-based moderation. Queensland posted a sharper turnaround, down 0.8%, coming from a 2.1% regain in the second quarter, which, by the way, had outperformed other states. Sales volumes were slightly up in both New South Wales and Victoria, and there were very significantly slower gains in South Australia and Western Australia. So the takeout from all this is that I don't think the RBA is doing sufficient to get inflation under control. The reason I think they're being cautious is because of the high debt load that households in Australia hold. And of course, we've already seen mortgage rates rise significantly. But the problem is that they are clearly not doing enough. And compared to other central banks, it means that we're going to have a problem for longer, quite a lot longer. And it also means that interest rates are going to have to stay higher for longer. And that's going to put even more pressure on households and their debt burden. So I think the RBA does need to revise its approach and learn from perhaps those other central banks who finally are grasping the nettle. And it's worth underscoring what Fed Chair Jerome Powell said the other day, that actually inflation must be beaten and quickly because if it rages, then everybody is disadvantaged. But those at the lower end of the income scale are most significantly disadvantaged. The bottom line is that the RBA's approach is actually putting a whole lot more pressure on a segment of society, and it's going on for a lot longer. It's not appropriate. It's not correctly calibrated. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.